advise. The opinions and views of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. My name is Hector Mwatka and we're on to the second portion. Our topic now goes a little serious. It's about terrorism, exactly where it's going, what is it, and what exactly are we doing about it. We have a special guest who I find extremely interesting. Now, let me try to introduce to you what he is made of. His name is Rodolfo. He's known as John Ortiz Tiope. And I used to call it, I was calling it Tope, but it's Tiope. <laughs> uh, he's got a PhD. Um, he has a he has a doctorate de degree, not one, but four. Uh, let me read this to you. Doctor of Philosophy, major in leadership, minor in organization. He has a magna cum laude uh, on, on organizational development and a magna cum laude at that. He has a doctorate in education, uh, education management with distinction. He also want, has one with philosophy and a major in management. He also has a doctorate in public administration and he has units earned on that together with business administration and environmental studies. Now, if I keep reading this and all the accolades that go to, his, to all his academic success, that will take up the whole show. So let's meet the man we have, Dr. John. Hi, John. Thanks for being here. Hi, Sorry, I'm going to talk to you. Can we talk to you? Have a great, great afternoon, Harry. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, John, Dr. John, um, let's start with that question. What is the state of terrorism that is now uh, confronting us, considering the current events that have just taken place with the president going to Tokyo and heading a uh, meeting with another, well, he'd be my head of state, you know, no, but yeah. let's give him a plus for effort. That's about it. I don't yeah. want to comment anymore yeah, okay, on the legalities, yeah. but what about state of terrorism? You know, the, the state of terrorism right now is very alarming as we look at it on the, because the problem right now is that people would only look at terrorism as uh, synonymous to Osama bin Laden. When Osama bin Laden died, they say that terrorism died. No, it's not dead anymore. It's not that terrorism doesn't die. Why? But once we look at even when people who now are now looking at the, the internet and research on the Wikipedia, they would look at who are the qualified or the categorically classified terrorists in the country. There, there are four. There is the Abu Sayyaf, the MILF, the MNLF, and the CPP, NPA, and the F. But there's also one that we should not classify, which is the opportunist politicians and <laughs> government <laughs> officials. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, we're in the state of terrorism, is that as you look at on the provinces, there is insurgency in the provinces. But these insurgents are uh, hiding on the term insurgency and ideology. But how could it be? Uh, ideology and insurgency, well, in fact, they're burning uh, buses and they're uh, ex extorting money and asking but for revolutionary taxes. Isn't that just being rebel activity? Yes. They say they have the, 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 the ideology, but it, as they move right now, it is more of uh, extortionism and banditry. Mm, correct. Specifically, when they, when they ask uh, revolutionary taxes for bi big businesses and even that's the... That's banditry. Yeah, that's banditry. In Tagalog, that's tulisan. <laughs> tulisan, tama. Tulisan. Yeah, ganun na So... Right now, they, they have even legal fronts, as, mm. as we know it, because they have two points of struggle, the, uh, the armed struggle and the legal struggle, mm. which is the legal struggle, they have the, the different party lists and they have the different mass organizations. They're uh, already they infiltrated Congress without question, and they're all there. In fact, ANAD, the party list, yeah. is... Wait, wait, let me see. You also have a group. You're the national president of the first Philippine pro-democracy foundation. Yeah. That's the pro-dem. Tell pro us about that. How does that work into terrorism and everything? Anti-terrorism, right? No, anti-terrorism in a way that we're looking at an alternative. And also we're looking okay. at the direction of a sustainable development. It's genuine sustainable development. Because yeah. once we look at sustainable development, specifically in the, the aspects of uh, Agenda 21, 
we, we would now look at, uh, for you to hate terrorism, what would you like to do if you hate terrorism? There should be a, the alternative. It's not just like mm. hating the communists, hating this uh, insurgents. Kung mali sila, ano ang tama? So, root, you're trying to find out the root cause and address that instead. Yeah. The sustainable whatever so, strategy. There's so many strategies in terms of attacking the, 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 the terrorism campaign. There's, in terms of the military, they're looking at two aspects in terms of terrorism uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. There is such a thing as uh, the terrorism uh, suppression, mm -hmm. and there is such a thing as the terrorism prevention. On, okay. on, on the part of the suppression system, that is the, uh, the military operations. Enforcement. Enforcement. Well, they need to, to go to the mountains and launch a war against uh, this terrorist group. Uh, correct. But, but these people wouldn't like to be called terrorists. They would say, we are insurgents. But it's only a concept of semantics. <laughs> Freedom fighters. <laughs> Freedom it's fighters. Just, in line. You know? yeah. You're in the government, which it makes you legal. <laughs> if you're not on government side, you're illegal. So you're crime. You're yeah. criminal. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, on the problem, what is pro-democracy? It's just easy because the word pro is being used by anti-terrorist groups and anti-communists. But on our part, pro-democracy pro is a progressive, responsible, and organized democracy. Mm -hmm. Why? If you do not like pro-democracy, you what are you? You're an anti-democracy. So And they would say, Oh, you're so very dogmatic, you're anti com We're not anti com We're uh, pro prog we're looking at progress. Right. We're looking at development. Alright. Because uh, once we look at uh, communism at all, specifically when we look at the theories of communism, they would say that uh, the, the CPP, NPA, even the NDF right now, would say that we are just victims of injustice. Okay, I do agree that they are victims of injustice. But the problem is that the launch or the methodology wherein they would like to, uh, to move on and prosper the revolution... This is what's wrong. Th there's something wrong. That's where it becomes a crime. But it becomes a crime, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Because when, when, when we look at history right now, Marx says that... Uh, Revolution or communism would start in Germany, but Marx was wrong. It started in Russia. Yes, in Russia. So Lenin applied Marxism in Russia. So when Lenin was ap applying the Das Kapital and the Communist Manifesto, the, the German situation is different from that of the Russian situation. Yes. So what Lenin did is that he rewrite. It becomes Marxism, Leninism. Then the revolution okay. won. Yes, then yes. there goes uh, Mao Zedong. Uh. Mao Zedong applied the, the thesis and thesis. Uh, the, the thesis of uh, the Lenin, and they would say that the, it is more it is effective in Russia. But again, the Leninist approach is different in the Chinese situation. Mm. So he rewrote it again. It comes Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. Maoism, Mao Zedong thought. Then there is uh, John Mason who is trying to be a Maoist, uh, Mao, Mao Zedong local, like from China goes to the Philippines and apply Maoism. And right now, he doesn't know the, the, the concept of a situational based analysis in the application of ideology. All right. Which is, the Chinese situation is different from that of the Philippine setting. Of course, iba ng, iba ng iba yan, eh. <laughs> That yeah. is why the, re the revolution is now 42 years, not winning anymore. It's, 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 it's yes. not winning, yeah. Mm. Because it is a different approach on the Philippine setting. Uh. So, it is about time that these rebels or these people would now look at it that the methodology or even the ideology is not applicable right now mm. in our country. So, that's why Prodem came in. So mm, Prodem would, the birth of Prodem. Yeah, the birth of Prodem. So, if you would look at Prodem right now, is that what would be the, the approach? Because we could not launch a revolution through armed struggle. Why? Because that's very unmerciful, very bloody. So, what we need is more of a... A change in terms of the internal. Change yourself before you change other people. Change yourself before you change the country. But the problem is that people who are advocating for this change do not even like to change themselves. And even the interest is their own pocket. <laughs> mm. That's the problem now. That's, that's what we're stuck with. Yeah. That's the state of terrorism. Yeah. Us. Yeah. In other words, where is the problem? Where is the state of terrorism? Yeah, that, that is why on the state of terrorism, the government itself is also has a factor in terms of promoting terrorism. Why? Because the injustices being... Uh, Perpetrated by the, every... It's also government. It's yeah, part of it. Yeah, yeah. The government itself, the, the corrupt officials in the government, mm. look at it. You're an ordinary uh, Juan de la Cruz. For so many years, you're just an ordinary laborer. And there's a government employee. Yes, yes. You're just being... You go to the government and you become a millionaire uh, by means of corruption. So, yes, so. yes, yes. So people would now uh, feel injustice and... Once they pattern just there, there goes the, the group of these uh, 
communist insurgents, then they would ask them, oh, you know, the government is so much, uh, giving you so much pain, join our group! <laughs> so it's actually, the root cause is also from the injustice from the government that they create, that force these people to look for change. Yeah. But, but the problem right now is that uh, once these people look for change, they go to the mountains and they now would launch arm struggle. Arm struggle. Once they launch the arm struggle, the problem right now, you create a bad image for the country. In, in your uh, earlier episode, you're mentioning manufacturing and business. Yes. Okay. How would the investors, and why would the investors go in this country if there is terrorism on the different countrysides? Because we always look at it on the concept of the return of investment. Why should I invest in summer? Yes. There why? is no ROI. There is no guarantee for sustainable manufacturing yeah. because of uh, social unrest. Yeah, social unrest. So what would happen is that if there are no opportunities in the provinces, people would migrate to Manila. <laughs> Which is what's happening. And when they migrate to Manila, there are no opportunities. Then there will go the illegal settlers if there are no opportunities. Which is what's happening. There are no, uh, no opportunities. As they say, ang taong gipit sa patalim ko makapit. Oh, tama yun, tama yun. So yung krimen, laging lalaki. Kaya malaki ang implikasyon ng terorismo sa uh -oh. krimen na nangyayari sa ating bayan. Mm -hmm. People would say na, Oy, Dr. John, bakit naman palagi mong sinisisi yung mga terrorist na yan? Hindi natin sila sinisisi because nakita rin natin na ang, the problem there is that uh, there are also victims. But the problem is that they like to make a solution but they create another problem. <laughs> With their solution, which is wrong. Which is wrong. Because the arms struggle. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Uh -huh. But what do you do? Uh, John, based on your studies, how did we become like this? How did we reach this stage, this catch-22 situation? <laughs> Wala na tayong moralidad eh. We've lost our values, we've lost our morals. At first, I started to blame the academe, yeah. then the church. Yeah. And then I realized, hindi eh. Everybody now wants to become a politician or go into government. Mm -hmm. Not because they want to serve the people anymore, mm -hmm. although that's what they mm -hmm. say. But it's really to enrich themselves. So what happened? What happened to our culture? Diba, in, in Catholicism, hindi naman tinuturo yeah, yeah, everybody's contributory to the problem. But oh, yun na nga. Eh. <laughs> the church, the academy, the people have so many bobotante. Oh, uh, oh, <laughs> bobotante. Very good. How did we get there? Can we blame the Spanish of the five of three hundred years that we were under them? Or what? The problem with the Filipinos is that they do not realize that they are really Filipinos. The, the idea, unlike the Japanese and the Koreans and other nations, but we have a heritage. I don't know. The Filipinos have a heritage. We have a nice, we have a nice flower, flowerful history. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we have, we have the heritage, but the concept of teaching liberal arts and history is not being internalized by the students right now. Specifically, one problem of the state of education is the poor disregard to liberal arts education. Why? In terms of the academe, uh, teachers or even students wouldn't like to study liberal arts education anymore because they would say it is not a major subject. Uh, uh, it's true. No? Uh, when, when in fact, teaching liberal arts education molds the holistic personality of the entire person. It teaches them nationalism. It teaches them how to be a Filipino. It teaches them how to, to fight for your country, specifically the military training. Mm -hmm. The problem right now, we have no military training. In China, we have about two years military training. Singapore, we have two years. We used to have that ROTC. ROTC, yeah. In, our, in ROTC, the, the military training uh, would, would teach us... Uh, discipline. How, discipine, and how to fight for our country. Lee Kuan Yew once says that uh, once a person knows how to fight for his country and how knows how to die for his country would really be a good uh, good uh, citizen of a country. Mm. The, but the problem that, well, is that we changed the ROTC with another subject and it's not uh, uh, promoting nationalism. Yes, ROTC now is not mandatory, it's not obligatory anymore. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah. a, it's an elective. It's an elective. Yeah, it's an elective. Uh, yeah, yeah, elective yeah. Na lang and they would say it's militarization ng ating bayan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ng mga but because of that, that's how you instill democracy. Uh, what happens in this system wherein the root cause is basically injustice? One injustice and another injustice and another one, and all their solutions just create another problem. It just multiplies and then metastasizes. Well, well, injust injustice is caused by greedy people within the society. There would be no injustice if there are no greedy people in, within the society. For example, as but as greed you, is human. Yeah, as they <laughs> say, based on psychology, we have unlimited needs and wants. If we are given 100 pesos, you would like another 1,000. Correct. From 1,000, so on and, and so on. Yes, it's, yes. It's, it's human nature, isn't it? But, but, the, but the problem may be, it's more of molding the, the, the human nature and the values right now. Disciplining the, it, the, holding the, it back. Yeah, holding it back. 
because we're being open to the material world and being open to so much of the material world is that being having so much money is a status being rich is a status mm. <laughs> and unlike uh, and looking at that being rich and they would now sacrifice a moral integrity and dignity that's the problem right I, now. I agree with you mm. so there's a lack of nationalism discipline among a people to regenerate themselves to become a better people and be more progressive. Yeah. Anong nangyari sa ating kanya-kanya na wala lahat. Yeah. Uh, uh, How could we promote to correct that? Oh, very quickly lang. I know it's very difficult. I'm not asking you to solve the problem yeah, yeah, yeah. of the country. Yeah. I mean, there are so many people that are studied and, you know, they're all over and everyone's trying it. How would you propose to correct it? You know, as they always say, what would be the problem? Is it the system or the people? Sometimes, the system declare, uh, dictates the behavior of the people. Correct. Yeah. I agree. So, we need a system change. <laughs> uh, system change. Yeah. But the, the, the point is this. Who would lead us to implement a better system? There should be somebody with a, with a guide of the divine providence that maybe the president would be... So, benevolent leader. Uh, yeah, benevolent leader. Like that with Marcos. He yeah. failed. So, bagay. That's because he wasn't benevolent enough. Yeah. Then on. At the start, he was benevolent. Very, yeah. He was very good. Yeah, yeah, first yeah. 10 years, yeah. it was very, it was correct. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We got rid of the politicians yeah. and everybody mm. towed the line. Yeah. But more than anything, Marcus, um, the Marcus Rule, martial law, introduced to us the concept of discipline. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, we have lost it. Yeah. Right now, in terms of discipline, people have no discipline anymore. In terms of corruption, we, this is usually the problem in terms of the fight of corruption. Why? Mm. We, we would always like to look at the bigger fish in the, in the government in terms of the fight of corruption. But corruption would start from the lower level. Uh, uh. Specifically on the value setting. Once, okay, a, a, an ordinary driver would bribe a policeman. If such value would be corrected slowly by slowly, it, it would go to the top. But the problem is that it is not a culture. It's accepted. <laughs> yes, it's a culture. Yeah. Ang meaning din na to be corrupt. Eh. Yeah. Parang mas marami ako sa lapi. Mas kung mas marami ako sa lapi, I'm successful. You're mas, not. Sa sabi nila, mapapahiya ka. Okay, nabibilin ko naman akong respeto. <laughs> uh, uh, correct, correct. So, there is really, uh, it's obvious we can't seem to have a revolution because we don't have a people that are going to stand up against each other and fight. So, mali. Ano? Do, do we need a revolution? But what kind of a revolution? It's more of a revolution on values. A value revolution. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I, I, I keep saying that too, you know. I, I totally agree with you. A, a, value, a revolution on character in general. But how could it be done? It is a long process. A long process. But, but we don't have the time, Doc. Hmm? You know, ako, I believe if we don't do it now, Alamo, it's, it's like smoking cigarettes. You, you want to cut the habit, you just cut it. In deep way there, because this corruption, this, this, this culture of corruption is so well embedded into everyone's lifestyle, his moral fiber is made of, it's all corrupt. In the, that, uh, the, uh, if, if there would be somebody that would handle the system that, you, that would say that you do not like to be changed, I would change you. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Ganun, no, no, wala nang iba. Oh, eh. Ganun, Ganun, na, no. Kasi kung hihintayin pa natin yung mga tao na talagang magbago, it is a long process. Kaya lang ang problema ganito eh. In terms of philosophy, ang konsepto ng mabuti, eh kailangan may masama. <laughs> Palagi, kahit na mapabuti natin ang ating lipunan, eh marami pa rin lalabas na masama. Pero ang mas maganda, onti na lang sana ang masama. <laughs> uh, more controllable. More controllable. Uh, do you believe in a society that has, that enjoys all the freedoms like what we have? Sumobrang freedoms natin, di ba? I guess if you have a benevolent leader, yeah. the freedoms will be curtailed, certain freedoms, yeah. but discipline will be introduced. Yeah. Hopefully, nationalism will follow yeah. and will be embedded in the people. Ganun ang hapon, di ba? Yeah. Yung, kita mo yung earthquake hindi sila nagnakawan. Yeah. Uh -huh. They didn't loot the stores. Mm -hmm. Ah, no, they helped each other. Kasi maliwanag sa hapon ang pagiging hapon. Na alam nila, pag sila'y nagnakaw sa kapwa pa hapon, ah, maghihirap ang kanilang bayan. Eh, sa uh, atin, hindi nakita ng kapwa Pilipino yan eh. Uh, <laughs> na kami nakawan ng kapwa Pilipino mo, naghihirap ang kapwa mo, maghihirap ang buong bayan. Inintin nila lang yung bawat sarili nila. Parang isang politiko, pag nagnakaw sa kaba ng bayan, hindi niya may isip na yung kanyang mga constituents ay maghihirap. At ang kanyang bayan maghihirap, isip nila niya, siya ay mapanatili sa pwesto at manatiling mayaman at manatiling mayor, congressman, senator at napaman. <laughs> Ergo oligarchs. Only well, Lord, so, yeah. <laughs> especially those that have been around for five, six decades, and they continue to stay in power. Nakakalungkot nga lang ang mga warlords niya at mga oligarkong niya, itinatangkilik 
ng ating mga taong bayan. Uh, Bakit yun nangyari? Kasi minsan, ang nangyayari yeah. sila kumikita. Doon din kumikita at sinadya ng mga warlords na yan, mga political dynasty na yan, na gawing mangmang ang kanilang mga tao. Para pagdating ng halalan, uh, uh, eh kanilang uh, mabibili. Nila, mabibili. mabibili Ayaw nila ng development eh. Stupify them. Yeah. <laughs> Stupify. <laughs> yeah. Nahari Potter tuloy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. But it's true. It's yeah. true. Mm. So, they are in control. Gee, it's also Machiavellian. Ano? Mm. You create the conflict so you can control anything that goes out of line. Yeah. Okay, so oh. <laughs> it's, you know what's sad, uh, John, Dr. John, mm. you know what's sad is the bad, the corrupt, the immoral, the one with no values has succeeded mm. in creating that. They have succeeded. We have failed. We have failed in our nationalism and, and our democracy. The problem right now, the, the pillar of morality should be the church is to be the one to guide the, that concept of morality. But even in the church, there is also corruption. <laughs> I did say that to the young man. He did. Siya nagsabi niya, hindi ako. But, De, ito nga pagkasabi nila eh, pag yung politiko ay humingi ng pera sa tao, eh, korupsyon. Pag si father humingi ng pera, donasyon. <laughs> no, totoo yan. Totoo yan. Pero ganun din yan. They're both asking eh. Yeah, diba? Um, ganun din yan eh. Uh, very quickly, we're already at the end of the show and we're at the top of the hour. Tama ba yung ginagawa natin solutions ng government, the current administration towards the MILF and the other rebel groups in the South? Because I know, I, I know deep and down, uh, President Pinoy or Aquino, I'm sure wants to do something good. Yeah. I, I, it, I mean, mukha naman, he's bred that yeah, yeah. Of course, the administration and the people around him, well, that's another big, big, big question mark. But he himself... Tama ba yung approach na yan? How to approach the MILF, the oh, Abu Sayyaf, and all the Actually, the, the problem there is that the president shows his weakness. Baliktada. Uh, yeah, kasi, number one, the, the MILF is considered as a terrorist group. And on that point, you do not negotiate with the terrorists. <laughs> ah, good. Straight to the point. Yeah. Okay, ganun lang yan, ano? Ganun lang, kasi simple. If, if you like to negotiate and you like peace, oh, sige, I'm, I'm sincere. You're a terrorist group and you, you would like peace, it would not be me to negotiate to you, you are not the head of state. And number one is that Murad is not the sole authority in the MIR. That there is also Kato, which is much powerful than Murad. So, it would create another bad precedent if you grant the the demands of the MILF. Even the other Muslim group would say, oh, pwede rin kaming sub-state. The other group would sub-state din tayo. Sub-state, sub-state na lang. Ganun na mangyayari. Palit na palit na lang. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to cut the show. We're already at the end of the program. Uh, I'd like to give you Dr. John mm -hmm. Chope, um, your message to our viewers. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends, alam niyo po mga kaibigan, in this little time that we have with uh, Harry, eh, kahit pa paano, eh, ang inyong lingkod ay nakapag-share ng onte sa usapin ng uh, paglaban sa terorismo. Sabi nga namin, sa usapin ng isang progresibo, responsable at organisadong demokrasya, ang pagbabago sa lipunan, hindi lamang kailangan ng malagin na pamamaraan o pagsama sa mga madudokong pakikibaka. Kailangan mahalin natin ang ating mga sarili at mahalin ang kapwa Pilipino. Kung maga, hindi na kailangan dumanak ng dugo, magmahalan po tayo. Baguhin muna ang sarili bago mabagong bayan. Kung maga, let us change ourselves and let us change the nation. It is a problem of values and morality. And let us look at the mirror and say, Ako ba ay isang tunay na Pilipino? At ako ba ay makakatulong sa aking bayan? Yun lang po, Harry. <laughs> you know, if only I could speak Tagalog that fluent. Mananagalog na ako tuloy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you what. I'm gonna get Dr. John to be regular on my show, on this show. If not to co-host, even to be a resource. And we will have him more often because this way, in the, on his next appearance, we will start going into uh, specific issues rather than talk of theory or the whole system as a whole. We cannot solve the problems just right there. You know, my son always brings it up to me and says, uh, this is what we do, just, just take out the judiciary. That was what I said on TV the other day. Let's outsource the judiciary altogether. Let's just cut them. Let's run them over the bad people and whatnot. Kill them all. Hindi. You know why? The option for failure does not exist. This is still a state. This is a country. We call it the Philippines. And we're all Filipinos. And to give up means that option, you've already succumbed to that option, which is to fail. We can't fail. We're not supposed to fail. And we will not fail. We may have a lot of problems. But we will solve it. It might not be together. It might not be now. But we keep trying. Because the minute we stop, then we will become a failed state. We hope you've enjoyed our program. My name is Harrington Watko. Stay with us. Oh, yes, my public awareness service. 
Let's see. Beware, don't buy the Aeronox gadget. That ruined my car. The second one, beware, Akari, that light thing. That's not a super brand, just so you know. Maraming salamat po and thank you and good night. Yeah.